So here's a hydrogen atom with its lone electron in orbit. Electricity or a source of high energy such as flames will cause that electron to be excited to higher energy levels. How many energy levels are there? Well, there's actually infinite of them, mathematically anyway. Okay, so let's uh, excite the electron. It goes from level n equals 1 to n equals 2. And as it jumps back down again, it releases a photon. And hopefully you remember from the, uh, from the SL part that the bigger the jump back, the higher the energy photon released and the shorter the wavelength of the light of that photon is. Notice how we are approaching the so-called limit of convergence. And eventually, it, the electron goes from n equals 1 to n equals infinity, and the uh, atom is now ionized. Okay, so now we've got to take the value uh, for the wavelength at the limit of convergence and see if we can calculate the first ionization energy. So I've got 91 nanometers, and I'm going to try to convert it into kilojoules per mole. Hmm. Okay, so here we go. First of all, uh, we're given a wavelength, and the only equation with wavelength is that one. So we're going to use this equation, and then we're going to try to use this one to get the energy, kilojoules per mole. So first off, I've got uh, the speed of light is the wavelength times the frequency, and then I'm going to be using this equation. So the frequency is the one that bridges both equations. So frequency is a uh, speed of light divided by wavelength, which is, well, what's the speed of light? We can do that. Speed of light is in this table here. There we go. Table two. Ninety-one nanometers. And we come across our first little problem. Speed of light's in meters, and we need... Uh, to keep the meters to make it work, but we've been provided with nanometers. So I have to convert the nanometers to meters. Well, how many nanometers, nanometers, my American compadres say? Uh, well, that's to do with a billion. All righty. So nano's a billion. So now I'm going to fix that. I know there's a billion nanometers in one meter. Now this equals one. The top and the bottom is the same, and so I'm just multiplying by one. It's not going to do anything other than fix the units. So that gives me 3.30 times 10 to the 15 seconds to the minus 1. Just make sure the units match. Yep, meters are gone with meters. Nanometers are gone with nanometers, leaving me with just per second. Nice. So that's a very high frequency. Yep, the... Uh, this ultraviolet light is needed. That's, uh, that's the frequency of ultraviolet light. And what will that ultraviolet light do? It will ping an electron from a hydrogen n equals 1 off to infinity to ionize it, n equals infinity. All right, on to the next part. Okay, so let's work out the energy of that photon. I've got Planck's constant, which is h, which is here. That's kind of to do with the pixelation and the quantization of the universe. Very interesting idea. So that's uh, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 30 joule seconds. And now I'm going to multiply that by the frequency, which I just calculated. Two point one nine times 10 to the minus 18 joules. That is not a lot of joules. In fact, that's the amount of uh, energy that you need to put in to take uh, the electron from the hydrogen n equals 1 level off to n equals infinity level. And conversely, if you were to take an electron from n equals infinity and drop it back down into the n equals 1 level of gaseous hydrogen, that would be the energy uh, released. Now, the IB wants it in kilojoules per mole, so we have to convert the joules to kilojoules. That's not too tricky. And then since this value is for one atom, just one atom, I'm going to have to multiply that by Avogadro's constant to get it for a mole. So let's convert to kilojoules per mole. So I've got 2.19 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. 
I know there's a thousand, say we say in England, joules to one kilojoule. And also I want to make sure that it's for one mole. So I better multiply it by Avogadro's constant. Let's check the units. Joules go with joules. Uh, well, that's it. And I'm just left with kilojoules uh, per mole. Nice. So let's see what that comes out at. That comes out at 1315.5 uh, kilojoules per mole. Well, let's not be so cavalier with the sig figs here. Looking through the question, this has two significant figures. Uh, so we should stick to two significant figures. So the first ionization energy of hydrogen is 1300 kilojoules per mole. Let's check it on the old data booklet. OK, so let's do this uh, backwards now, but with helium. So calculate the wavelength, this time in nanometers, of electromagnetic radiation absorbed when an electron is ionized from gaseous helium. Well, so I'm going to need to look up the first ionization energy of helium in the data booklet, copyright IB. So 2372 kilojoules per mole. And from there, we're going to look at E equals HF. Uh, I'm going to rearrange that because this is the frequency that I really need, like above. And then once I've got my frequency, I'm going to put it into this equation to work out the wavelength. OK, so the energy is 2372 kilojoules per mole. Now, I don't want it in kilojoules, I want it in joules, and I don't want it for a mole of atoms, I want it for just one individual atom. Okay, so let's fix it into joules, then it will work with Planck's constant. And now I want it for each atom, so I'm going to divide it by Avogadro's constant. And once I've dealt with that monstrosity, I'm going to divide it by H, which is Planck's constant. Hopefully, kilojoules go with kilojoules, joules go with joules. Oh, that should be mole to the minus one. That goes with that, leaving me just with seconds at the bottom. Seconds to the minus one. All right, let's calculate that. So that gives me 5.94 times 10 to the 15 per second, or hertz. Yep, I want a really big number. The lights, ultraviolet light, it's going to have that kind of very high frequency. So now I've got the speed of light from the data booklet. I'm going to divide it by the frequency that I just calculated. And that will give me meters. Yep. Wavelength lambda is in meter. It's a length, isn't it? So that gives me 5.05 .05 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. And we're going to need it in nanometers. So I'm going to have to deal with a billion here, aren't I? In this case, I'm going to multiply it by a billion. So convert to nanometers. 5.05 .05 times 10 to the minus 8 meters multiplied by, well, there's a billion nanometers in one meter. And that's going to give me 51 nanometers. So I'm grounding to two sig figs. Well, do I have a reason to do that? Let's have a little look. That's four. This is infinite sig figs, although it looks like one. That's three. Three. I think I should be at three sig figs, so 50.5, because I can't see anything uh, at two sig figs. All right. 
Let's just check on the old internet. 